For most of us quote unquote prepared people, it's second nature to grab a gun and pack it in your waistband before heading out for the day. But how many of you keep something a little more capable in your vehicle? Call it a get home gun, truck gun, whatever label you want to put on it. This is something that you'll grab when the shitty situation you find yourself in gets a little shittier. Now there's plenty of things to think about before just grabbing a rifle out of your safe and tossing it in your vehicle. What kind of setting do you normally find yourself in? Are you in urban areas with lots of people close by? Are you in rural areas where you have a lot more distance to cover? What caliber is going to be best for you? Today, we're looking at one of my favorite co-pilots for when I'm out and about. This is the B&T GHM-9 SD Gen 3. And yes, it takes Glock mags. Before we dive into today's video, channel sponsor time. Black Dot Ammunition provides the majority of ammo that I use in my videos. They stock everything from 380 up to 308. If you're looking for quality ammo at an affordable price, head over to their website and use discount code 715 Tactical at checkout to save some money on your order. Let's dive in. First off, if you aren't familiar with the name BT, you're probably living under a rock. But I'm not going to fault you for that, because most days, I want to live under a rock instead of dealing with the idiocracy of today's world. Hailing from the land of Swiss cheese, b and produces some top quality firearms. You know it's what you would expect from the Swiss, but just like their watches, these things do come with that Swiss price tag, right around $2300, and that's if you can still find one. These were a limited run, and I believe only 120 of them were made. B&T seems to do a lot of limited runs like this, for whatever reason. Now the GHM-9, it's a scorpion eater. And I say that for a reason. Not only does it blow the CZ scorpion out of the water, but GHM stands for grasshopper mouse. And what's a grasshopper mouse known for? Killing scorpions. It's a very clever name, and it makes me like this thing that much more. Now this is the SD model, and it is in fact a true SD, meaning it has porting in the barrel that will slow down supersonic ammo to subsonic speeds. Pretty cool. The way I have this set up, it's pretty basic. I have a mod light up front, an Aimpoint Comp M5 on a Unity mount, a stippled Reptilia grip, a Magpul vertical grip, and a B&T stock. Definitely not anything crazy, but it's exactly what I need and nothing I don't. Now I know at least 10 of you are probably going to ask who stippled the Reptilia grip. Parabellum Research is a company local to me. And hey, I like supporting homegrown businesses. Not only that, but they do a really good job. Check them out on the gram. Now let's get up close and personal with this thing and get some of the specs out of the way. This is a direct blowback 9mm. It doesn't operate on rollers or some black magic gas system. Direct blowback is about as basic bitch as you can get when it comes to PCCs. The lower, it's polymer unfortunately, but I know B&T offers billet lowers for around 700 bucks, and this thing will accept any of the APC9 Pro lowers. So if you want to use the B&T mags instead of the Glock mags, you can do it. It's full ambi with a mag release, bolt catch and bolt release on each side. I guess the only non-ambi part is the side folding charging handle. Although you do have the ability to move it to the other side if you want. The German stick grenade, this is the dedicated suppressor. And it does come with this gun as a full package. I know it's a goofy looking can, but hey, it works really well. It fits over the 4.3 inch ported barrel, then threads on. The fitment's great, and I think this thing looks pretty badass once it's all together. You have an M-Log handguard, so you can throw on some different things like this mod light, 
but on the bottom of the handguard is Picatinny. If you've ever seen the Noveski Ghetto Blaster, it's pretty similar to that. Another cool thing about the handguard is the locking tab on top. It fits into the upper receiver, so you don't have any shift or rotational play. Yeah, now this thing is a two stamper, and I know that's a turn off for some people. The two stamp champ, one stamp for the can and one stamp for the stock. I did buy this as a pistol, so I did a form one and put on this BNT stock. I really like these things and run one on my HK SP5K PDW. They collapse down really tight and make it possible to fit this thing in a multitude of little spaces. The stocks are pretty pricey, and I mean like 500 bucks pricey, but they're solid. Shooting a true SD, it's cool man. Being able to shoot supersonic ammo and having a normal conversation with the person next to you, it's a trip. Since I chose this thing as a truck gun, it must cycle hollows and defense ammo flawlessly, right? You would be correct. If you're planning on using something for protection and use good self-defense ammo, which you should be, you need to do some diligence and make sure the gun will cycle it reliably. If that means you have to dump a couple hundred bucks on some hollows, so be it. You don't want to get caught in a situation and then find out that your chosen gun doesn't cycle certain ammo. While testing this thing, I ran everything from 115 black dot range ammo to 124 spear gold dot to 147 grain black dot subs, which that shit was freakishly quiet, and they all ran reliably. Now I carry 124 grain spear gold dot in my G19, so the fact it runs without any issue makes me extremely happy. The self-defense ammo, it's definitely snappier and a touch louder but hey, it cycles as it should, and that's what I need this thing to do. The only thing I did notice was that I wasn't getting locked back on occasion. I couldn't pin that on the ammo or if some of my mags were starting to go to hell, but I did run into that problem. Still not the end of the world though. I wanna touch on the trigger in this thing, cause it's actually quite good. It's a two-stage trigger with a really clean break. The reset, it's a little clunky, but man, do I like this trigger for a carry gun. I'm not looking for anything like a Geisley SSAE with a really light break, but this, man, this is the sweet spot. So why did I pick this thing? First off, one of my biggest fears in a self-defense situation is overpenetration and hitting something that I didn't intend to hit. I don't think I'll have that issue with a 9mm and especially with good hollows. Second, it's quiet as shit. I mean stupid quiet to the point that I won't cause any damage to my kiddo's ears or my own. Not only that, but it gives me the ability to communicate effectively with my wife or whoever I'm with at the time. Third, it's been extremely reliable and it takes Glock mags. EDCing a Glock 19 and having the ability to use the same mags is a huge plus. I usually keep a few extra in a backpack or tucked in the car. You know, so take the advantages when you can get them. Plain and simple, this thing is a badass and fully capable PCC. I hope you guys were able to take something away from this video or simply enjoyed the show. As always, thank you for stopping in, stay vigilant, and I will see you next time.